Today we're going to review translations of quadratic parent functions. Um, this should be review, but it's been a while since we looked at it, so I wanted to go over that with you. Um, remember that the quadratic parent function is y equals x squared or f of x equals x squared. Um, when we do this, we always start at the origin. You can use your calculator, you just, just can plug in your number uh, and square it. So if we square negative 3, we get 9, square negative 2, we get 4, square negative 1, we get 1. And then remember that these are buddy points. So when we graph this, we talked about um, we can go over 1 and up 1, over 1 and up 1, over 2 and up 4, and on the other side, over 3 and up 9. Because we have those buddy points, we have that axis of symmetry that we talked about last week. Um, but remember what the parent function is. So use your words just such as vertex, max, min, increasing, decreasing. So the graph has a vertex always at 0, 0. It is also going to have a minimum vertex. Let me write that up here so it's all together. Um, it will increase and then it will decrease. Um, or rather, it will decrease and then increase because what goes down must go up and all of that. Um, when we draw our axis of symmetry, um, the equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals 0 because our symmetrical, oh, that's not a very straight line. Our line of symmetry will go through the origin. Um, it is also the, uh, when we write our vertex, we have our h, okay? So it's always our x equals h. Um, and that's just a little quick recap of parent functions. So um, when we, I'm not going to do that piece. When we look down here at number six, you can see that now we've added a number to our parent function. So we said that this was 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. But when we add 3 to it, so 9 plus 3 is 12, 7 plus, right, 4 plus 3 is 7. This is a 4, this is a 3, and then again, 4, 7, 12. And now when we graph it, we can see, in fact, that we are starting at 0, 3. And now we can keep going. So we're at 1, 4, which is still over 1 and up 1, like we talked about that counting over 2, up 4, and so on to draw that parabola. Um, so our vertex is now... It was at 0, 0. Our domain was all real numbers on the parent function. Our range was 0 is greater than or equal to y. And our axis of symmetry was x equals 0. So now our vertex is at 0, 3. Our domain is still all real numbers. But now our range is 0 is uh, the lowest, so I'm sorry, I had my sign backwards here, less than or equal to y, and now it is still x equals 0. So you can see the only thing that changed was, in fact, this constant, and this constant made us go up 3. Um, we could say the same thing with the x, e x squared minus 4, so 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, or 9, and when we subtract 4, we get 5, 0, negative 3, negative 4, negative 3, 0, and 5. So now we're coming down here to negative 4 over 1, up 1, over 2, and up 4 is um, always going to be that counting principle we talked about with our parent function. Now we can see that our vertex is at 0, negative 4. Domain is still all real numbers. Um, negative 4 is less than or equal to y. And our axis of symmetry is still 0. So when we look at those, the patterns that we noticed, um, we should have noticed that we had a plus or minus a c value, that constant, which is going to be our y-intercept. Um, our tables were the same. Um, in our table, we added or subtracted that C, and then our graph went up or down depending on what that C was. Um, 
Let me go back and make a quick one very quickly. This should have been three. Um, so now um, our vertex is going to go up or down depending on what our C was. Our domain was always all real numbers, but our range was C was less than or equal to Y. And our axis of symmetry was always X equals zero on all of those. So what we were talking about here was a translation. And we were talking about K. So remember when we talked about um, vertex form Y equals A times the quantity of X minus H squared plus K. So all of those things we're looking at the K. And the K makes things go up or down. Um, in like manner, this one is going to be our H. This one, remember, insiders lie. So now, when we look at our table, we have our parent function, so that's not going to change. But now this is, so if we had negative 3 plus 3 quantity squared, where negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and 0 squared is 0. If I put in negative 2 plus 3, that's a 1. 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. 0 plus 3 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. And then we're going to have um, 1 plus 3 is 4, is, so 16. 5 is going to be 25, and then 6 would be 36. We're not having the buddy points because we're on the other side of this. And the reason that is is because insiders lie. So really, this is a negative 3. And that's where we're going to start on one side. So our vertex is, in fact, negative 3, 0 compared to 0, 0. Our domain is still all real numbers. Our range, 0, is less than or equal to y. But now... We're at zero, and then it's going to go back up on either side. So that's actually not changing. Our axis of symmetry is x equals zero, but here our axis of symmetry is x equals negative three because it's our h. Um, for negative four, you can try that one in, in your calculator if you would like, but it's going to be very, very similar. So what we need to take from this is that we're looking at the H. And how does the value of H? H is going to shift left to right, left or right. Okay, and remember insiders lie. So the example that we did a minute ago with the negative 3, Instead of our vertex being at 0, 0, now it is at 1, 2, negative 3. And then it was increasing like this. Um, so I wanted to just remind you of what H and K do. And then in your Google form, I'm going to put a couple of different questions. I'm going to put 20, 21, and then I'm going to pull from some another page. So I want you to be just familiar Remember again, a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. This is going to be left or right shift, and this is going to be an up or down shift. We're going to talk about a tomorrow. If you have any questions on this, let me know.